Someone once tickled my fancy with a comment. They said, if you ever fall on your face, at least you're moving forward. That's great, but I mean, to me, as long as you're moving, you have something to smile about, you know? This signifies that you are now officially graduates. Hallelujah! Congratulations, class of 2012. It's over! What's over? I'm gonna introduce everyone because I'm the narrator, so it's not awkward. Hi, I'm the narrator. So, what's your name? I don't, I don't know. Okay, I'll just put subtitles for that. Can you say YOLO one time, una vez? That attracted Latinos to me. This is gonna be like a documentary movie, right? Yeah. I've never made a documentary movie before. And what better place to start than Paris? It's gonna be interesting. And it will be because I made it. So now that we know everyone, we're gonna go ahead and get this dude all rolling. Adventure awaits ahead. My name is Daniel Ortiz, and this is my journey. After exiting the plane, everyone is ready to party, especially Miss CJ. Uh, or not. You see, we are stalled at the airport for a little while while we are waiting to be picked up by a tour guide and a bit tired. You see, there was a bit of time disparity for us. While it was the crack of dawn in Paris, it was barely 2.41 a.m. back in Houston. But we shrugged it off, and after taking aerial shots with European urinals, we are well on our way. Taking our first hop. hop. After getting situated in the hotel, we began our descent into metropolitan Paris. Everyone else was just as excited as I was. Say hi, Miss CJ. You know, just from looking outside our tour bus window, I was in all the norm that is Parisian. From staring at the architecture to just the people. Okay, that's good. But before I knew it, we had already arrived at our first stop. The Basilica on the Hill, La Basilique du Sacre Coeur, the Basilica of Sacred Heart. But before we went in, we thought we'd grab a quick bite to eat. We quickly realized that most beverages in Europe are sold warm and without ice. And being the good American that I am, I bought a steak with some french fries. But don't worry, we burned it off after walking six flights of stairs to get to the top. But once we were there, the view was absolutely amazing. The panoramic shot of metropolitan Paris from east to west was breathtaking. And it was really easy to creep on foreign people too. But then Bowie noticed someone rather than something. The performer in front of Sacre was amazing. That's legit. And he was. He was doing some tricks that I'd never seen before, and then some. That's a pen in his mouth, by the way. I wanted to call him out and say that he was cheating in some way, but then he climbed the pole too fast, so I clapped instead. I mean, yeah, there were other performers, but needless to say, he was my favorite. Right after we walked inside to the Basilica, and as I turned the corner, I realized why it was so popular. It was way bigger on the inside than it looked on the outside. You see, just to light one of those candles is about 10 euro, which translates out to $12 a piece, a price that pilgrims come from all around the world and gladly pay. And honestly, it's easy to see 
why, because it's such a beautiful place. Right after that, we took our place in front of the hill. That's where I learned that Bowie was Bowie. afraid of birds. My mouth. After climbing down, we saw some kids playing on scooters, so I thought I'd practice my French. Je veux le soleil en ton visage. Yeah. I told him that if he lets me take a few shots, I'd make a trailer for him. So, that's what I did. So, there you have it. My first friend in Paris, Nicolas. Immediately after, our bus dropped us off at Notre Dame, but we went to the garden instead behind it. You see, Notre Dame is the most popular religious site in all of Paris, attracting more than 10 million people annually. So wait in line, maybe next time, I was in the mood for some sorbet. So we just had a good time walking around, but it seemed like we weren't the only ones having a good time. <laughs> but that's Paris for you, right? After a quick subway ride, we concluded our night at the Hippopotamus. I was fatigued from the first day, but I knew that from here on out, it was just getting better. We got back late last night and started our day just as early that morning. We started our day with a bus tour that was narrated by a local guy. It was hard to understand her at times because it sounded like she was speaking French. Okay, given that time, she was giving directions to our bus driver in French, but it was really hard to pay attention though, because every time I looked out the window, I was absolutely mesmerized. You see, there was always some fickle of inspiration that oozed out of every corner of every building. Every building told a story, and right now, I was at the coolest library on the planet. But I would have to put my daydream to the side because we had already arrived at our next stop, the Palace of Versailles. Bowie was so excited, he immediately said something, pointed at me, and quickly began running. And then quickly stopped because he was tired. But honestly, who wouldn't get tired? You see, the garden behind the palace stretches at over 51,000 square feet complete with mazes that seem to go on forever. In fact, if you look hard enough, you can find a restaurant within the maze. And if you can find your way out, you can say that you enjoy that restaurant within the maze. Look, rare Brazilian fountain. Look, rare Brazilian wildlife. Look, rare Brazilian grass. Never before been touched by mankind. In fact, it... all right, don't worry, they're not American, they're Russian. The inside of the palace was just as extravagant as the outside. We all had these little earpieces connected to the French tour guide from the bus. She also had this little thing on her head so that we can distinguish her, and believe me, it was really easy to get lost while you were just in the crowd, or if you're just taking a quick glance up. You see, every square inch is completely decorated with paintings, engravings, and art hangings from the ceilings. All those candles on the chandeliers, those are all real. I guess it must be pretty fun lighting those every day. But before I can count exactly how many there were, we are already on our way back. Okay, give me a break. There were a lot of things that we were about to see. Like Parisians in their everyday life. It's the experience, Bowie. The experience. We gotta revisit some old places and see some new ones. Needless to say, we clap for a lot of people. Hi. So hi mom, hi dad if you're watching this. Where are you right now? Uh, see you later. Where in the river are you? Um, just the middle of it, really. <laughs> <laughs> I quickly found out that I was the only one trying to practice my French. I have learned what I see. Are they wrong? Oh, eh! Hey! Don't say!
Before I could tell them that it wasn't really Hogwarts, we had already arrived at our next stop. Le Tour Eiffel, the Eiffel Tower herself. This is the East Pillar in front of me, where there are about 300-400 people. Now, let me tell you a quick fact as we're walking back to our spot in line. Did you know that Paris is the most international city on the planet? On any given day, they have more foreigners than natural Parisians inhabiting its limits. And there we are. We're at the bottom of the Eiffel Tower waiting in line to go up. We are kind of in a bit of a rush. I'm trying to go up the Eiffel Tower and we get there, we take a couple of pictures. Fast. Now before you throw a croissant, in order to get to the next level of your average two-story house, it's about 14 steps. While in order to get to the next level of the Eiffel Tower, it's about 328 steps. Or if you want to uh, omelette du fromage and get to the top, it's about 1600 steps. But believe me, even from the first floor, the view was gorgeous. You all look like little ants from here. It's moi sur le premier étage. We had about 26 minutes to go up, come back down, and go back to where our group's location was. Come fly with me, let's fly. I ain't getting cramped, stop. I wanted to take the same shot, but after helping fix my camera, luck just wasn't in my chance. <laughs> Let's go. We had to fill up some time doing something while we were waiting for the bus, so we got pretty creative. Up, up, up there. Yeah! We even played a game of ninja right next to the Eiffel Tower. You know, it's no bigs, it's whatevs. Just another day in Paris. Our next and last day in Paris began at the one, the only, Le Musée du Louvre. The Louvre Museum. Now, the Louvre, I don't know about y'all travelers, but this is the largest museum I've ever been to, with over 40,000 engravings, 3,000 drawings, and 500 illustrated books. Needless to say, there was a lot of walking underground, but it gave us a chance to say that some of the best art is right under your feet. But my next stop was personal. You see, in 2008, I had a French foreign exchange student in Paris named Gregoire. So while in Paris, I thought I'd pay him a quick visit. Oh, oh it's a video. It's a video? My, par my parents want to see what you look like. Say, say hi to my family. Hi. Everyone. How are they doing, by the way? <laughs> Our biggest highway. A lot can change in four years. I remember my cheeks hurt so much because I couldn't stop smiling. You see, that moment made my entire trip. He lost his accent and he spoke so fluently in English. I am so proud of my brother from another mother and country. But after rejoining our group, we left together to go to the train station. Hey, uh, you totally in the speech <laughs> <laughs> Right now we are at the Daniel from the train. Okay. Not consensual, by the way. <laughs> um, right now we are on the train to go to Barcelona. And so, I guess that's just about it for Paris. The city was absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. Still, I can't help smile thinking about all the memories we made in Paris. <laughs> the smiles, <laughs> the laughter, <laughs> the Parisians, and that one guy that was peeing on the side of the road. Hey! But before you exit, there's one more thing I have to show you. You thought Paris was fun. Wait till you see our next adventure. It was kind of romantic. Krista, where are you at? 
Join us next time for an exciting adventure in Daniel Ortiz Goes to Europe Part 2, Barcelona, coming November 2012.